Well, hello, and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about 1937 military production pistols. Now, if you've been following this video series, you've seen how we've gone from the 1924 transition pistols, where 10,000 were ordered, and uh, we went from the model 1911 to the model 1911A1 in that time period. They ordered those 10,000 pistols, and then from 1925 to 1936, the military establishment didn't order any pistols. Now, from 1936 to 1938, Springfield Armory had to take and um, order under the guise of replacing ordnance in ordnance stores. They didn't have funding for any new pistols, so anything that they had to get was ordered under that separate um, accounting. Now, um, these all small arms and parts were delivered to Springfield Ordnance Depot. Now, the Ordnance Depot was attached to field service, but was also an integral part of Springfield Armory. And this is just a little side note. In July of 1942, Ordnance Depot became a separate establishment. Now, in November of 1935, the Navy Department ordered 1,580 Model 1911A1s. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, Springfield Armory inventory showed that they only had 2,290 pistols on hand, of which 82 were new and the other 2,208 were reconditioned. Now most of those were overhauled, pist overhauled pistols that had been used at national matches and by service teams. And the Navy requirements were for new pistols at that time. And because of this new requirement, or new pistol requirement, um, there was an order placed with Colts. So in March of 1936, Ordnance wanted to order 5,000 pistols, but they only had funding for 1,580. And the price on those was 2400 or excuse me, $24.65 per pistol and $0.75 cents per magazine. Now, records indicate that there were actually 2,349 shipped during 1937, and it's suspected that those extra 700 and however many were ordered to fulfill Army requirements. Now, the uh, first order of 1,000 pistols was in May of 1936, and there was an error in the slide markings because of old ordnance drawings that were they were supposed to have the model designation on the receiver. So you can see right here, this is model of 1911 U.S. Army. And I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to grab a pistol from 1939 production that's just in beautiful shape. But anyway, um, it has the uh, designation in the correct spot, model 1911A1 U.S. Army down here on the receiver. So that was corrected in between these two pistol production runs. You must have got the right drawings. But anyway, some other interesting things. Now, the reason I have this apart, you can see I have the firing pin out and the uh, firing pin stop off of here. And the reason for that is, is this is the first time you start to see the serial numbers show up on the slides. And you can see underneath that uh, firing pin stop. And so maybe they wouldn't mix them up between pistols. But anyway, some other interesting things about these is they also have the uh, P proof mark that is up here on the uh, top of the slide about a half inch ahead of the uh, rear sight and then we'll also find that on the frame on this other side and here we go and then some other things with this that are bringing it more into line with commercial production at this point in time is the VP the verified proof Colts proof symbol here and then a uh, inspection mark, uh, W here. So that would be the Colts inspector um, putting his mark there. And uh, so that's some of the interesting things that were taking place. They're trying to bring more in line with commercial production. If you watch the video on the transition models, you'll know that I uh, spoke a little bit about there was 40 changes that Colts submitted at that time to help bring it more into line with their commercial production. But anyway, um, some other interesting things. Now, the reason I have this out is to show you, let's see if I can get the light to reflect in there the right way in the breech face. I, you know, this shot might work. You can see down in here where the firing pin hole is that 
this metal around here, there's actually a hardened steel plug that's in there. And the reason they did that was there was notice that there was peening occurring around the firing pin hole from uh, the recoil of the cartridge in um, the pistol. And what happened was they were afraid that they would have to replace this steel. So Colts used a technique that they had used on the uh, old early revolvers and that was a removable plug of hardened steel in there. Now they couldn't flame harden because they were afraid of uh, uh, of uh, warping these walls, these thin walls in here. So they went ahead and they used a screw-in hardened steel plug. Now Ordnance did their own test and they thought a pressed-in plug, or excuse me, Springfield Armory did their own test and they thought a pressed-in plug would work best. So that's what they designated with the screw-in plug as a alternative method. Well Colts never listened to them and they continued to use the screw-in method and subsequently all contractors during World War II used the same method and Ordnance finally changed their drawings in I think it was July of 42 to match the current manufacturing process and that being the screw and hardened face. Now what's interesting about this is none of those ever had to be replaced. So it was a, a mute point that the uh, would have to make that removable to uh, make to change that out. Now I'm trying to think if there's any other things that I wanted to talk about with this pistol while I had it out and um, I, I can't think of anything else at the moment. Um, you can see some of the, I'll just hold it up so you can see some of the checkering and stuff on it. You see how this rear mainspring housing is checkered now and then also how we have the checkering on the front of the trigger now which was done with the transition pistols and I didn't give you a close examination of those of those pistols but this is some of the stuff that's some of the changes that have taken place now. So now we're getting very close to World War II production pistols. So this one um, is a Navy pistol as well as this 1939 over here which is just in absolutely beautiful shape. What a great example of a model 1911A1 pre-World War II. And um, the 1937 production pistol that I have apart here they say that that is uh, of the uh, rarest of the uh, 19 or of the uh, 1911A1 pistols, and um, they're obviously the hardest to find. So there you go, another really interesting example of your model 1911A1 production and history. So. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this short video. I hope you learned something about these that you might not have known otherwise. And uh, I really appreciate everybody tuning in and watching these. And uh, have a great day.